Section 5.1, we're going to talk about a mid-segment of a triangle and how to use its properties, again, to um, set up equations and solve for x and plug it back in. So when we say use, again, that means we're going to be setting up an equation and plugging it back in to find a measurement. So first thing, let's define a mid-segment and then we'll draw it. So first, a mid-segment of a triangle It is a segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. So basically, you have this triangle over here. We have triangle A, B, C, and along each side of the triangle are midpoints. Now technically, we should be measuring and finding the midpoint, but for right now, I'm just going to eyeball it and say, all right, of side AB, that would be midpoint. We're going to name it E. Here, side BC, we would call that D. And here, of side AC, let's call this point F. So basically, the way you would know that all of those points are the midpoints if indeed it told you, all right, that AE is congruent to EB, then you would know that E is the midpoint. If BD is congruent to DC, then D is your midpoint. Same thing here, AF to FC. So now that you have all of these midpoints, a midsegment is a line that's going to come in and connect the midpoints. Here again, connect the midpoints connect midpoints. So every triangle has three midsegments. All right, we're going to name the tri the midsegments of this triangle. So triangle ABC has midsegments of segment DE, segment DF, and segment FE. So that's the definition of a midsegment. It is a segment that connects midpoints. Every triangle has three of them. And these are the three that are inside of this triangle, ED, DF, EF. Now, of course, these mid-segments come with properties. So let's learn about the first property, and that um, the mid-segment, the segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel. And remember the symbol for parallel? the elongated crooked double L's. It's parallel to the third side and it is half as long as the third side. So let's see what that looks like inside of a triangle. So again, a mid-segment is the segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. It is parallel to the third side and it is half as long as the third side. So again, we have our triangle we're just going to label it DEF. Let's see, let's create our midpoints. We'll call that A, we'll say it's the midpoint because those are congruent. B, we know that's the midpoint because there. And we can call that C, there are the segments that are congruent. Now what happens is when you have a mid-segment, AB, and what this is saying here is that the segment that connects the midpoints of two sides, these, this mid-segment, it is parallel to the third side. So basically in this triangle here, when we refer to the third side, the third side is basically the side that the segment is not touching. All right? This is the segment is not touching the third side. And sometimes you'll see it's um, said as the mid-segment is parallel to the side opposite from it. So that's another way that some books describe it. It's the, the side opposite the mid-segment. Now, what this is telling us is that the mid-segment here is parallel to the third side. So AB is going to be parallel to DF. So let's write that down. AB is parallel to DF. Now also, the other half of this theorem says that it is also half as long as the third side. So basically, AB is going to 
Let's fix that. All right, AB is going to equal half of DF. So again, here's AB. However long DF is, say it's 10, then this is going to be 5. If this is 12, this is going to be 6. If this is 10, this is going to be 20. Okay, now look at the other mid segments. Here again, we'll connect these midpoints. So there, that mid segment. So BC here, that's the mid segment, and here's the third side, the side opposite from it, the side it's not touching. So BC is going to be parallel to ED. So let's write that down. BC is parallel to ED, and also the mid segment is half the length of the third side. So BC is going to equal half of ED. And remember, every triangle has three mid segments, so we have a third. The mid third mid segment here is AC. So remember, the mid segment here is parallel to the third side, the side it's not touching, the side opposite from it. So that means that AC here is going to be parallel to EF. So AC parallel to EF. And then again, AC, the length of AC is half the length of EF. Okay, this next part, copy and complete in triangle ABC. So if we have here triangle ABC, and it's telling us that D is the midpoint of AB, and E is the midpoint of AC, then what is segment DE? Well, we just learned that a segment that connects midpoints is indeed a mid-segment. So DE is the mid-segment of this triangle. So now that we defined the mid-segment and we learned a little about it, a bit about it, the properties, let's find the link. So now we're going to, remember we always start with definitions and then we always add numbers. And then after the numbers, you'll see down here that we're going to add the expressions. So to find the links, here it's telling you that DE is indeed the mid-segment of triangle ABC to find the value of X. Well here X is sitting on the mid-segment and remember, we just learned that the mid-segment is half the length of the third side. So if DE is the mid-segment, this is the third side. So X here is going to be half of the third side. So it is 13. Here, our X is on the long side, so it's on the third side. So here's X, and here it is across from the mid-segment DE, which is 5. So you've got to double it. So again, think about things making sense again. If you are figuring out X and it's on the smaller piece, make sure you're cutting in half. If you're finding X and it's on the larger piece on the outside, you need to double. Now here, X is a little bit different because X is actually along one of the sides that DE touches. Because here's the mid-segment, and then here is the side where the X lies. So you kind of have to remember what a mid-segment is. A mid-segment is connecting midpoints. So that means E is the middle, which means those two pieces are congruent, so X is 6. So here again, if you're talking about the side opposite the X, all right, here we're going inside, we get smaller. Here we're going outside, we get bigger. Here we're staying along the side of the triangle. It's going to be the same. Now, using the mid-segment theorem, in triangle XYZ, they're telling us here that XJ is congruent to JY, YL is congruent to LZ, and this one equal to this one. So basically that was the information provided to us. Because that information is provided to us, we can now conclude that J, L, and K are indeed midpoints. Since we know now those are midpoints, we now can conclude that JL is a midsegment, LK is a midsegment, and JK is a midsegment. So let's see now if we can answer these questions. Remember this symbol here is parallel. This one here is congruent to. So parallel, congruent to. It's very important that you know how to differentiate between those two. 
So they're wanting to know, what is JK parallel to? So if we look here at JK, here's JK. Remember, it's going to be parallel to the third side. So JK right over here is going to be parallel to that third side. That third side is YZ. Awesome. Now let's look at XY. Um, XY here. There's XY. It's actually on the outer edge. What is it going to be parallel to? Well, this third side is always parallel to the mid segment. So it is going to be parallel right there to KL. Now, 6 changes a little bit because it says JL is congruent to. So you have to kind of find a piece that JL is congruent to. So let's see, I've kind of covered up my letters here. That's J, that's L, and that's K. So JL is right here. They want to know what is it congruent to. So think about this. This mid-segment is half the length of this. So mid-segment equals half of the third side. So basically, this mid-segment is equal to just half of this. So this mid-segment is just a piece. So the mid-segment is equal to just a piece of that. So JL, right in here, this piece, JL, is actually congruent to this piece. That is XK. Then again, so since this is a mid-segment, it's also going to be parallel to, or sorry, congruent to that piece, KZ. Great. All right. JL is parallel to, so here is JL. It's parallel to the third side, which is XZ. Now, 8 and 9 are congruent, so they want to know YJ, which is this piece here. YJ. What is it congruent to? Well, this piece we know is marked here is obviously congruent to this piece, so XJ. And that is also congruent to the mid-segment. So a piece of the third side is equal to the whole entire mid-segment. And one more. We have JK, which is here. They want to know what it is congruent to. It's going to be congruent to this piece, YL. So YL, which is also congruent to this piece here that is marked ZL. So now that we've used the properties with just integers, now we're going to incorporate, of course, expressions. So this is, again, where you're using the knowledge of the mid-segment theorem and you're creating equations. In number 10, okay, we're going to use triangle GHJ, and it tells you that A, B, and C are the midpoints. So that means if these are the midpoints, that this is a mid-segment, mid-segment, mid-segment. So let's put these expressions where they belong in the triangle. It may help as well. All right, if it helps a little bit if we enlarge this so that you can actually place the expressions right on the triangle. So AB is 3x plus 8. And they give you this whole thing, GJ. 2x plus 24. So now again, you're asking yourself, what do you know about side this segment AB and what do you know about this side GJ? If this is the mid segment, you know it's half the length of the third side. So your equation has to match the theorem. Again, the theorem states that the mid segment is half the length of the third side. So this is where again you're turning that theorem into algebra. The mid segment is half the length of the third side. So we have to first distribute here. So 3x plus 8 is equal to x plus 12 and then you're just going to go through and solve. The main thing you really got to watch out here for is that they're not equal. So don't tell me that a little piece is equal to a longer piece. That does not mathematically even make sense. It doesn't even look like it makes sense because this one is a lot shorter than this one. So just setting them equal to each other does not work. 
So subtract 8. So 2x is equal to 4 divided by 2 divided by 2. X is 2. They want to know what is the length of AB. So we've got to take that 2, plug it back in. So 3 times 2 is 6 plus 8 equals 14. All right, let's go on to the next piece. They tell us AC is 3Y minus 5. And HJ, this whole thing, is 4Y plus 2. So again, you're creating an equation based off of the theorem. The equation states that the mid-segment is equal to half the length of the third side. So again, you're going to distribute half of 4y is 2y, half of 2 is 1. Go through and solve. So there is y. The question is right here, what is the length of hb? So you're going to take this, and it actually wants the length of hb. So if we take this and we can plug it in here to hj, we just have to be very conscious of what hj is actually the whole thing. hb is just a piece of it. So when we plug it back in here, and we have 4 times 6 plus 2. That's going to give us 24, 26, but they only want half of that. So HB is going to equal 13. All right, great. One more. GH is, so they give us this side over here, is 7Z minus 1. And that BC is 4Z minus 3. And you know what, I really don't like those z's because all they do is look like twos to me. So I'm going to change that when I write my equation. And I'm just going to change it to an x. And I'm going to say, okay, I know the mid-segment is equal to half the length of the third side. So when you see this right here, and I'm looking, I go, oh, man, I've got to distribute right there. And when I distribute, that's going to give me a decimal. So you have another option. Again, the mid-segment is half the length of the third side. Or you can say that the third side is twice as big as the mid-segment. So typically when I'm doing these problems and I look at, okay, say this is the third side and it has odd numbers, I usually go ahead and double the even numbers so that I don't have to half the odd numbers. But both of these equations will get you the same answer. It's up to you. So here we go. Subtract 7. So negative 1 is x minus 6. We're going to add 6. So x is 5. And they want to know what gh is. So we've got to take that 5 and plug it back in. So 7 times 5 is 35 minus 1. So gh is 34. Now, for those of you who are listening, we're going to flip it over on the back, and we are going to work another problem because I just wanted to make sure we all are understanding. So flip it over on the back. All right, so I want you to draw yourself a triangle, and it's going to be triangle ABC. In triangle ABC, we're going to say that D is the midpoint, E is the midpoint here of BC, and F is going to be the midpoint of AC. Okie doke. So let's say that I give you that. This, so this is going to, we're just creating another example. And I tell you that FE is equal to 2x plus 8. And DA is equal to 10x minus 32. And I would like you to solve for x. So let's look at the pieces that it gives us. Here's our mid-segments. It gives us that Fe is 2x plus 8 and that Da is 10x minus 32. Now remember, it's all about making sure you realize what pieces these actually are. So Fe is the mid-segment. 
DA is only half of the third side. So remember, the mid-segment is equal to half of that third side. So to set this one up, we would say 10x minus 32 is equal to, because again, this is half of the third side, the mid-segment is equal to that amount. So solve for x. Again, I just really want you to pay attention to the pieces that you're given so that you can properly set up the equations. So there's your x. Also, let's think about this. Let me give you some other numbers. So another example here. If I tell you that df is 15, I would like to know what is the length of EC and what is the length of BC. So df right here, I'm telling you is 15. I would like to know what is the length of EC and what is the length of BC. So remember, D, DF happens to be the mid-segment. Well, it is half the length of the third side. So this is the third side. EC is just half of the third side. So those are congruent. And what if I told you that AF is equal to 12? What are the lengths of AC? What are the lengths of DE? So AF is 12. That's this piece here I'm telling you is 12. Well, then how much is the whole thing? Well, we just double it, so that's 24. And then how much is the mid-segment? The mid-segment is half the length of the whole thing, or it's exactly equal to half of it. There you go.